So tonight we are honored to have Matthew McKnight speaking to us about species orchids. Uh, Matthew is a 2021 graduate of Waianae High School. Uh, while at Waianae High, he was president and vice president of a handful of clubs. He was a student library aide for all four years and volunteered regularly. <clears throat> Matt has some of the biggest passion for orchids out of almost anybody I've met through the clubs. Uh, he's constantly looking them up. You know, I follow him on Instagram and every, almost every day I can expect a, a repost from Matt of, of somebody else's orchids or his orchids. He's got orchids on the brain just like me and, and he's way smarter than I am. So uh, let's give Matt our support and uh, let's listen to him talk about species orchids. Take it away, Matt. Well, thank you, Adam, for the wonderful introduction. And thank you all for our attending tonight's meeting. Okay, let me share my screen. I hope you all can see that. Brad, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Uh, so today I'll be talking about the world of orchid species. I'll just be going over a handful that I think you guys can all grow great in Hawaii. Uh, to continue on more about me, I am a member of three orchid societies on Oahu, Evo Orchid Society, Honolulu Orchid Society, and Lahui Okika, a species club member of the American Orchid. And I'm a big nature lover. Uh, as a kid, I was obsessed with different types of animals from around the world. In this photo, I was in Florida with an American alligator on my neck, on my lap, and then a python around my neck. But since I couldn't have both of those animals, I started to collect things I could have. And one of them were plants. Uh, I grow a large variety of plants, majority is species, and this is some of my non-orchid species that I have. First plant is Eucalyptus grandis, or the rose gum. This is a beautiful Australian species that can get over 150 feet tall. And it's only three feet right now, so I hope it doesn't grow that fast. Wonderful fragrant leaves. Uh, second form is Talangia tectorum, variety Ecuador. Uh, this plant is native to Ecuador and Peru, and it's a favorite of pond Talangia growers due to how fuzziness it is. Looks like an alien. And third plant is an all white Hawaiian hibiscus species, Kokio, Keokio. Uh, this species is native to Molokai, and it's extremely rare to find in its native habitat. I mean, environment. And sadly, it was marked as endangered. And then the third one is Talangia durati, or duratii. It's a beautiful species native to Brazil. And it's a favorite upon Talangia growers as well, due to how big it gets. Okay. Orchid species. Uh, first plant I'll be talking about is Dendrobium discolor. Uh, Dendrobium discolor is a wonderful species from Australia. It's the largest of the dens in Australia. And I also believe it's the largest of the speculative type Dendrobiums. They can be found growing along mangroves and often obtaining salt sprays. They like hot to warm temperatures and bright indirect light but they can take full sun if correctly acclimated. Uh, I have two plants that I got from Ryan Drade of the regular discolor. Uh, one is mounted, which I don't recommend because the roots are crazy. And then one is in a basket. But 
I have two types of this color, just the regular plain discolor, which is one of my favorites. Large mustard flowers, and then this uh, cross. Yeah, uh, from H on our nurseries. Very much more twisted than the regular form and more orange like. And when these plants bloom, they produce long lasting curly flowers and it's very stunning. Second plant is Polystachia neobenthemia, and it was formerly called Neobenthemia gracilis. This is a terrestrial species endemic to Tanzania. And this is one of the easiest plants I grow in my collection. <laughs> they take hot to warm temperatures and like bright light. Uh, before the pandemic, I'd originally grew all my plants in sphagnum moss, but I couldn't get shipment of it. So I had to transfer everything to a bark and terrestrial mix. They seem to be doing fine. Uh, when it blooms, it produces wonderful puffball clusters, of flowers, but they're not that long lasting. But a good thing about this plant is they're easy to get kickies from. I think Adam said he had hundreds of kickies from his plant. Next is Dendrobium brachiosum. This is a beautiful species indigenous to New Guinea. They like warm temperatures and bright indirect light. And during the summer, they produce long lasting flowers, puffball like flowers. Uh, there are two color forms, the pink and the white form. But my favorite is the pink form. And you all might be more familiar with the Njobin Hibiki, which is a cross with Brachiosum. There's been many nice specimen plants from Calvin Abbey and shows very nice. Next is Dendrochylum magnum, the chain orchid, or what I like to call the magnum pi orchid. Uh, this is Dendrochylum is native to the Philippines, and it's one of my favorites out of the gen Dendrochylum genus. They like warm to intermediate temperatures and bright indirect light. When these plants bloom, they produce long inflorescence with small yellow flowers with an amazing fragrance. Uh, before I had a large plant, it was over 15 pseudobulbs and I had it planted in sphagnum moss and I didn't pay attention and the plant had rotted from the middle. So now I have multiple divisions. But yeah, the fragrance of this plant is, it's hard to describe. I say it's um, like men's cologne. So that's why I call it the Magnum PI orchid. See Tom Selleck there. Uh, next is Gramatophyllum stapiaflorum, formerly Gramangus stapiaflora. This species is found in Malaysia, Sumatra, Java, and the Philippines. Uh, my plant is quite large. It's in a 10 inch basket and it obtains hot to warm temperatures and Right indirect light. I don't give it as much light as my other gramatophyllums. But this species is rarely seen in cultivation nowadays. So if you see when you need to get it. And we can't forget about Milwaukee's plant that received the CCM at the 2019, 2019 Air Orchid Show. I'm jealous. I only had two spikes on mine and I can't count how many spikes he had. But very stunning. Next is Dendrobium polytrichum. This is another stunning species from the Philippines. And it's very easy to grow. They like hot temperatures and bright light. These plants can bloom multiple times a year with fragrant blooms, but they're very short lived, only lasting a few days or less. And I originally got to this plant from Kamalto Orchid Nurseries a few years ago, and I really recommend it in your collection. And it likes to be mounted.
Next is Lepodi's bicolor. I skipped the page. No, I didn't. Oi. Sorry, Laparis Brosa. Uh, but this Laparis is found in Myanmar and the Philippines. Uh, it's a very easy plant to grow. It likes warm temperatures and bright light. And these, very, these plants are very compact and are easy to get divisions from. At one point, I had over seven divisions, but I had to get rid of them. I need more space. But yeah, they're very easy to grow in. I don't know if anybody can detect the fragrance from this plant, but I detect a light scent of asparagus. I don't know if anybody else can, but probably my broken nose. And next is Lapoti's bicolor. This cute little miniature is native to Brazil. They like warm temperatures and bright indirect light. Uh, the foliage of this plant is very succulent light. In my opinion, they do best mounted because it hangs over like that. But I have my plants mounted on cork and they like to dry out and they love water. And another cool thing I found out about this plant a few years ago is uh, the seed pods can be used as a vanilla flavoring, just like the genus vanilla. I never did try pollinating, so maybe I'll try that when it blooms. Next is Polystachia paniculata. This is a beautiful species found growing in the rainforest in Africa. They like hot to warm temperatures and bright light. I have my paniculatas growing in a, a fast draining bark mix and I originally had them in sphagnum moss, but I was keeping them too wet. I guess they're pretty drought tolerant or something, I don't know. I haven't had them much. I had them for only a year or so and I got them from Carmela orchids as plugs, but they bloom nice and the flowers are very tiny, the size of grain of rice. Next is Dramatophyllum scriptum. I I skip? I keep skipping one. Okay, very cool. Salagini usitana. This species is native to the Philippines. They like hot to warm temperatures and they like humid shaded areas. Uh, the cool thing about this plant is it's a sequential bloomer, having up to 10 or more flowers on one continuous downward spike. Uh, like most selogenies, this plant likes to dry out. And I had originally had it in sphagnum moss and it wasn't doing good. So I had to transfer it to a bark mix. Okay, next is Grammatophyllum scriptum. Uh, this is a species found in Borneo, New Guinea, and the Philippines. This plant likes hot to warm temperatures and bright light, and it's able to take full sun if correctly acclimated. Uh, plants of this species can get quite large. And my plant is over 100, 100 pounds and probably more since I have it planted in cinders. The cool thing about this plant is the efflorescence can get over three feet tall and have very long lasting flowers. But I recommend this to everybody if they want to get it. Um, I recommend you putting it in a basket with a lightweight mix so you don't hurt your back like how I did trying to move it. <laughs> Next is Dendrobium pacifierum. <clears throat> This species is found in the lesser from the islands, Malukas and Sulawesi. This dendrobium likes hot to warm temperatures and bright indirect light. Uh, when this plant blooms, it produces wonderful small firecracker red flowers. And it's very similar growth habit uh, to the pigeon orchid, forget the species name. But I had originally obtained this plant from Adam Almeida last year, and it's one of my favorites. 
Next is Enthalus sectoroides. I have a difficult time saying the species name. Uh, this is a miniature that was formerly a Thalus, but they changed it recently. It's found in Jamaica, Guatemala, and Mexico. It likes intermediate to warm temperatures and humid shaded environments. On mature plants, it's able to produce hundreds of tiny green flowers to make a nice show. And I have this plant mounted on a piece of pu'u and I originally purchased it from Kamoto Orchid Nurseries over five years ago. But it's looking kind of bad right now because uh, the plant covers the whole mount and I was only watering one side of the mount and the other side wasn't getting water. So the other side had a problem with spider mites, but it's finally coming back after a year or so. Next is Vanda garia. <clears throat> this species was formerly Ascocentrum garia. And it's an adorable, vendacious species found in Thailand and Vietnam. They enjoy uh, hot to warm temperatures and bright indirect light. They also like very good airflow and love water. So I have my plants mounted on pieces of hapu'u. And the funny thing of when I got this plant, I got it from Olomano orchids a few years ago and the owner said, you can take them. He said he hates them all. <laughs> I don't know why he hates them, but very nice plants. Very cool species. Uh, next is Dendrobium transinum. <clears throat> this is another species native to the Philippines. They grow in hot to warm temperatures and like bright light. Uh, they have a pendulous growth habit, so it's best to have this plant mounted. And this, this Dendrobium is not that good of a bloomer. But when it does, it produces wonderful fragrant flowers. It smells kind of like soap. But very nice to eat leaves. Uh, and I have this plant mounted on a piece of hapu and it likes, seems to like it on there. And I originally gotten it from Kaumoto Orchid Nursery. And I think they still have plants like this. So if you want one, it's there. Next is Apropsis lilifolia. This plant is found in Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. They enjoy hot I and mean, warm temperatures and likes to dry out. Uh, and they can bloom multiple times a year, but flowers are short lived. But the spike on this plant is pretty long. My plant is not that big, but the spike was over, probably close to a feet long, a foot long. And they like fast draining mixes and you can mount them. I'm experimenting with mounting them. But very nice plant, very cool and rarely seen in cultivation. Uh, next is Dendrobium lacanestrum, variety Crescentiae. Crescentiae. Uh, this is the larger form of lacanestrum. There's a smaller form. Uh, this is a wonderful den from Australia. They like cool to hot temperatures and bright indirect light. And this is one of my favorites of the Australian species. And in its natural environment, you can find it growing in a variety of conditions from very low light to hot, full, all day sun growing on rocks. So you can imagine how hot that would be. And the plants are very compact growers and they can produce tiny flowers, many tiny flowers throughout the year. And they can make a nice show and they make a nice specimen. I'll probably be 50 when it covers that mount or older. <laughs> uh, next is Engracum hibernium, uh, commonly known as the common orchid. This species is native to Madagascar and it's the largest of the Engracum genus. It likes hot to warm temperatures and bright indirect light. Uh, they typically bloom 
from December to February with long lasting fragrant flowers that are only fragrant at night. I have two specimen plants that I got from this lady in Avalon. They're quite tall and they're heavy too, over a hundred pounds. Hopefully I can make them into nice, better specimen plants because they were kind of sunburned, but they're coming back after two years now. And lastly is one of my favorites, Cattleya triani, commonly known as the Christmas orchid. This species is native to Colombia and is the national flower of Colombia. They like hot to cool temperatures and bright indirect light. And many growers say that this uh, Cattleya species is difficult to grow, but they're not that bad. And I've been using city water on them for a few years, and I recently started using rainwater, and they seem to be doing a little better. But I have them growing in, in all baskets, and I hope to make them into specimen plants soon, maybe get some awarded. We'll see in the future. <laughs> But there are many color forms of this uh, Cattleya, and I only have three. Uh, the first form is Cattleya Tirani, Homo rubia, Sanje de Toro. Very nice dark form of Tirani, and dark lip too. Uh, next is Cattleya Tirani, Elegance. Large, large flowers, I think almost the size of my hand. Very curly lip. And the last form that I have is Cattleya, or oh, it was labeled as Cattleya triani variety typo, but it doesn't look like a typo. And I talked to many Cattleya species growers and they said it looks more like a cerulea. And that would be cool if it actually is a cerulea because they're quite expensive. Okay. Okay, and these orchids. Uh, Andy Phillips has been collecting orchids since he was a child. And now in his uh, late 50s, he has one of the largest orchids, I mean, collection of orchid species in the world. And in his collection, he has over 700,000 plant species. It's one of my idols. And I have a short video to show more about his plants. You booked a sunny Verbo ski chalet. Yeah. Oh no, why is it not Okay, Brad, can you see that good? Yes. Okay, thank you. Seven years old is when I actually discovered what an orchid was. Now, the property is nine tenths of an acre, and I've got three quarters of a million plants jumping here. It's like being in the jungle. It's really is like being in the jungle. To my knowledge and what I've been told by a taxonomist that this is the largest, most diverse species collection from around the world. I'm basically a Noah's Ark in the markets. You know, there's so many species and there's so many things that are disappearing with the habitat loss. Uh, you know, I just want to continue propagating and hold on to them, make sure things don't get lost. What I do is very unique in that most of the orchids are mounted. They're growing up wood, the way nature intended. My name is Andy Phillips, and we're here at my greenhouses in Encinitas, California. So he really is one of my biggest idols and 
the orchid world. Uh, I haven't visited his place in person before, but um, I've seen lots of videos and I've watched it for many, many times. <laughs> but his place is very organized. He has lots and lots of hanging space and benches and places to mount stuff, like mount like a whole orchid wall. And many times he'll point out when he brings in plants from other countries, uh, a non-orchid plant will, would follow and pop up in his greenhouse, like peperonias and some other stuff, like this plant right here. Well, that's cool. Uh, I took this from Andy's Instagram page, some of the cool species that he posted. Uh, first is Huntlea oliceae, very large flowers with an amazing color. I haven't tried growing in any of these yet, but I think that they're warm growing, so I might have to try them out. And this is uh, some sort of Dracula species, very dark color. And Andy has a lot of Draculas, which I'm jealous I can't grow them because they're cool and intermediate growers. And this is Dendrobium auxiliae. Uh, I have plants of this, but they're still seedlings. But I hope to bloom them in a few years. And they're just stunning. I love that fuzzy lip. Very cool. And in my opinion, one of the biggest highlights of this place is his Sobrelia collection. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Sobrelia is an orchid genus, and they get quite large. At his place, he has plants that are over 20 feet tall in his greenhouse and some that are outside like this. But they're very cool and I wish I could grow them, but again, more cool growers. And he has a separate uh, section for his uh, Stanhopias and Oranthes and Goncoras. Just have them all spaced out like that is cool and I wish I could have money to do that. And he has a makeshift catwalk that he made to get a bird's eye view from everything. So very cool. Okay, the importance of tags. Uh, it's very important to have the name of your plant and to have its tags on it. Knowing the name of your plant will help you when you need to do research or ask about the culture of the plant. Uh, and it's also important when you're sharing the visions or cuttings. And if you know me, I'm very anal about everything having a tag, even if it's a succulent or type of palm tree species, it's gonna have a tag on it or in its pot. And understanding the tags is very important as well. Uh, this is Dendrobium parisii, uh, variety Alba 4N. It's a wonderful honohono species. And the Alba that is printed on the tag is an indication that it's the white form of Parisia. And also the 4N means it's a tetraploid, so bigger flowers. And it's always important to have the correct name of your plant. Uh, this is Dendrobium Little Sweet Scent, Winnie Lay. It's a beautiful Honohona hybrid. And this tag was incorrectly printed as Wee Wee Lay. So I was cracking up at that. Uh, I don't, I tried not to use that much stuff when I'm growing, but now that I have a larger collection, that's kind of difficult to do. But some of the simple things I use is rainwater. I don't have an oral system yet because I can't afford it. <laughs> and I, when I can't collect rainwater, I get buckets and buckets and I try to fill up my trash cans with it. And it's free. And seems to be doing wonders with my mounted plants. Uh, Nutricoat, I forget what the number is, but I use it on a lot of my plants that need a winter rest, like my potted funnels. I just, I have it in a little fertilizer basket and I take it out when it's time to stop feeding. 
And uh, this is uh, Island Supreme's Orchid Special 13 to 13. I've been using it for a year now and it seems to be doing good. I've been using it <clears throat> with rainwater on my mountain and plants and baskets and they produce wonderful roots and some nice blooms too this year or last year. Okay, so that's it for me. Uh, thank you all for attending tonight's meeting. And a big passion of mine is to try to educate others on species, not only orchids, but different plant species. And I, a big passion of mine too is uh, continuing the interest of growing orchids in Hawaii. And I pray in that our orchid societies will continue on strong for many years to come. Okay, questions and answers. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. And this is uh, one of my first presentations that I haven't done in, not in high school. <laughs> so I did my best. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent presentation. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> yeah, Matt, you, you did really good. Thank you, Brandon. First time. Yeah. yeah go. So we're going to open it up. Thank you, Matthew, for speaking tonight. We're going to open it up for questions and answers. Um, one question I have for you, Matt, is yeah. how large is your growing area? It's not that big. Uh, it's only... 20 by 20, but uh, I've been growing a lot of my plants and trying to adapt them to full sun so I can have more room in the greenhouse. But yeah, 20 by 20 greenhouse, yeah. The second question is, do you have any space to add more? Uh, of course. <laughs> I'm always spending my paycheck. Once I get it, I'm going and buying plants and that's something I got to work on <laughs> but yeah I'm always making space I'm always adding pipes in the greenhouse to have things hanging and I still have a wall that I have to put all my mounted plants on any more questions Yes, who is that? It's Adam. Oh, hi, Adam. Sorry. How's it, Matt? <laughs> um, do you have any particular struggles growing your orchids in Y and I? Like, does the heat affect you particularly or anything like that? Yes. Uh, keeping the humidity at uh, appropriate level it was difficult for me. I, I added a uh, misting system because it, things were drying out too fast and the uh, humidity was very low. But yeah, that's something I had a problem with for years and a big problem. That's why I have spider mites sometimes, but I've been spraying and stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Adam. Nice to see you. Hey, hey, hey Matt. Um, yeah. So the spider mites come out when it's dry, right? They typically like yeah. drier environments, yeah. And they oh, okay. Attack That's the succulent yeah. leaves, yeah. <laughs> oh, that because <laughs> that's why my orchid sometimes I, I don't I don't water for like five days or mm. five days or so, and I notice if I keep constantly do it, it yeah. I see the spider mites come out and yeah, it damages the. Really. Plant pretty bad. Yeah. And yeah. a big, uh, what I used to tell people, yep. if, yep, like uh, thrips or spider mites on the bottom of their leaves on all of their plants. And I would say always water underneath the leaves because that's where they're going to be hiding. If you just water the top of the plant, then you're getting the stuff that's on the top, but things are hiding on the bottom of the leaves. So that's a good thing to oh. remember. Okay. So always got to keep it wet then. 
Yeah. Uh, most times, yeah. Yeah, that's why my water bill is high. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Hey, thanks, Matt. Yep, no problem, Brandon. Any more questions? Matt. Yes. What was that that small green flowered species in your presentation? Uh and flowers cetro cetroides. It was a plural thallus before. I can't oh, even uh, see the species name. Here I can type We're it. gonna have to <coughs> set up a trade, Matt. You know, I was gonna give it away because I don't know, I think it would prefer more pure water. But since I I don't know. I gotta bring it back to life again. It was so nice before at my other place before I moved. Now it's ugly. But yeah, let me know. I can probably give them to you. <laughs> hold, hold on to it for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So Matthew, where is your growing area now? Uh, well, uh, I was originally living up Wainai Valley, but I moved to my mom's house in Makaha. It's a little, a little more hotter in Makaha. And uh, when I moved, I didn't have a greenhouse or anything, and I had them on the side of my house. And so a lot of plants got sunburned, and they're just coming back after almost two years now. But yeah, it was a difficult moving everything, especially my large plants. And, and have you had the chance to go to Andy's orchids in person? No. Uh, hopefully, when all this COVID stuff is gone, I can go take a trip down there. But very amazing place, and I, I'll probably want to stay there. <laughs> yeah. But very, like, there's species that me and Adam have never seen before. It's just so unusual to see. Yeah. Matt, how long have you been growing plants then? Uh, I've been growing plants all my life. I think I tell people I was about three years old and then my grandma was making me plant her marigold seeds. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> well, you are naturally botanist. Where do you go after after high school? Uh, I plan on attending uh, college uh, this fall. Okay, good. Come to Windward Community College. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> With I <love> Adam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, my we love to, we love to have you there. Yeah. I, I love education. And, uh, I hope to be an ag teacher at Wina High School. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Stop buying orchids and buy an oral system. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so Matthew, right now, as far as rain water is concerned, how are you um, catching it? Uh, it's quite difficult because we don't have any rain gutters, but we have a big house and I go to a, a spot where the most water comes down and I just reply and I fill up the buckets in and I go out and, and I move the bucket and, and so on. Yeah, so it's kind of a pain, but it helps me. I will, Sean. Thank you. Any more questions? OK, so uh, thank you very much. Oh, wait, sorry. I had a question quickly. Go ahead. Yes. Um, this is yeah, a question for you, Matt, and anyone else who may have a comment. But um, I'm just curious, in your opinion, the best place to source species orchids on island. I know you mentioned Kawamoto, 
and uh, Andes, which is in California. But are there any nurseries in particular that have a, a lot of species available usually? Well, depends on what you're looking for. Uh, for me, I like a lot of uh, Philippine species. I love the Philippines, even though I haven't been there. But Kaumoto has a lot of Philippine species. And I would say they have the most uh, collection of species and a large variety. But uh, if you want like Catleas and uh, Encyclias and stuff, I think H&R would be a good place for that. Yes, Eddie, I love the Philippines. <laughs> but yeah, and then you can, it's good to have a connection with other growers because they might have something that they might not have at the nurseries. And that's what I like to do. I like to have things that is not common in Hawaii and not seen at, uh, in our collections. But yeah, either those places are good to find species. So was that was that question from Jordan? Is that right? I think so. Yeah, Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, that was me. Okay, so Jordan, it, it's um, a little bit more limited getting species orchids on Oahu. There are some good sources on both Maui and the Big Island. So you can always email me, I'll give you the list of those. Um, it's a little bit hard because not all nurseries are willing to send to individuals. They're more um, handling commercial type orders, uh, but there are a few that are possible. Um, and shipping is really not that bad an option to be able to get some very good species plants. Uh, and uh... There is a species club, and even though they're not having in-person uh, meetings, uh, I would think that's a good place to find a variety of species too that you can have. Yeah, like me and Jen, we're both species persons, and we like to give out cuttings and divisions and stuff. All right, are there any other questions for Matt? I have one. Hi, Go Matt. Ahead. This is Hello. Florence from um, California, Northern California. You need to come to the mainland, especially to the San Francisco Orchid Society meetings. Many of, the, many, of the, many of the members are species aficionados, and they can teach you a whole lot of different things. And then you can go to Andy's from there because it's just a, a quick six hour drive. <laughs> <laughs> it seems long, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, I, I follow you guys on Facebook and lots of nice meetings and stuff as well. Yeah, you should uh, try to join their uh, their monthly meetings because uh, when they have their show and tell, you mm. will see lots and lots of species. Well, one day when I stop buying plants and have money for a plane ticket, I'll come down too. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Matthew. It was a yeah. very spectacular um, tour through your orchid collection. We enjoyed seeing such great variety. I notice a lot of them are miniatures or mounted or mm -hmm. hanging in baskets. So you're very creative with how you um, take care of your plants. Um, so quite an extensive collection for a young person. And we love to see young people involved with orchids. Mm -hmm. Such a good thing. So be sure to get your friends to join in on whatever activities we have. And, and like you said, when the Species Club hopefully gets a chance to meet in person, that's a great time to see beautiful species orchids. Uh, it's been a little while, we lost our sight. We don't have the elementary schools anymore, but once schools are able to be used, we hope that we can see each other and we can see more orchids in person. So thank you very much. Now. 
Matthew, if you can stay on at the end of the meeting and if people have questions, uh, they can always talk to you or ask 